call this segment Tent Talk. Okay. I don't know. It's just, it's alliteration and it sounds good. Tent Talk. Okay. All right, welcome to our first edition of Tent Talk. <laughs> exciting stuff. Yeah, well, today was pretty damn exciting. So, today was our first day cycling in Xinjiang, and we came into it knowing that it's basically a police state out here, and that we would be going through a lot of checkpoints. There's, it's gotten a lot of bad rap in the media lately. Um, but, nevertheless, we're here, and we wanted to see it for ourselves. And, and we went through no police checkpoints. Not, not today, but... We rode from Urumqi to Changji. Changji. Yeah, Changji. Um, just a short day. It's our first day back cycling after a few days off. And we didn't end up leaving Urumqi until about midday, like noon, 1230. Because um, we didn't get in taking the train from Lanjo until midnight. And then we had to go out and get dinner. So we didn't really go to sleep till like 1, 1 30 a.m. Um, yeah, so we slept in and then we left late. So we cycled to Changji, about 40k, and it's a pretty big sized town. It looks like a big city to me. Yeah, I mean, it looks like a big city. It's full of high rises and all that jazz. Yeah, it's just another big block Chinese city. They all look the same, except this one had, uh, had police, like, huts, houses, boxes on every single intersection. Yeah, that was crazy. Like, when we first got to Arumchi, I thought that Arumchi had a lot of police presence because there were, like, police vans and stuff at intersections. Oh, my God, Changji. It was literally every single corner had, like, a mini police station. And it was just ridiculous. Like, police everywhere. And so we get to Changji, and we go to find a hotel. There's a million hotels in this town. Like, all yeah. of, we passed a ton, right? Plenty of hotels. Yeah. We go to find a hotel, of course, as we predicted, because we heard that getting hotels is really hard out here. The first one we tried, no foreigners. Second one we tried, no foreigners. I finally started asking, where is a hotel that foreigners can stay in this town? The people were very, very nice about it. Yeah. Like, yeah. in previous towns where we've had this happen, not in Xinjiang, they've been super rude to us. Like, they take one look at us, and they're just like, like go away be done with it yeah or they just like the, stare you up and down and say no no i think these people feel the oppression of the police state yeah um but there's nothing they can do about it so right yeah so we were getting turned away the people were super nice and they were giving us directions writing down hotel names for us so we went to one of those hotels it was super fancy, but they did indeed accept foreigners, except they were having a wedding today, so they had no rooms available. So then we stop at another smaller hotel, because at this point I'm like, we'll just knock down every single door that's a hotel, and odds are eventually somebody will take us. So we stopped at this small hotel, and so at the entrances to all the hotels, there's like a full-on like airport style, like screening process like there's a police officer or rent a cop there, not really there's sure. a security guard and a metal detector yeah and you have to put your but you also have to put your bag through uh like yeah -ray i thing. don't i didn't see anybody actually using that but oh it's, i did it's there yeah i did yeah so that's really strange at every single hotel it's like that and as soon as they saw us walk in they were like what are you doing here where are you going and i'm like the the hotel to ask if they have a room <laughs> so we pull up to this small hotel and the owner happened to be sitting in there and she was so funny she was hilarious she was clearly over the whole like super strict police crackdown in this area because as soon as we walked in obviously she knew what we were walking in for like it's a hotel and the police officer guard lady like started asking us questions trying to pat us down trying to like look through our luggage and she was just like lady just stop just let them in which was kind of funny that's, yeah. the first, that's the first time that happened but this lady ended up being so incredibly nice like she said that her hotel couldn't take foreigners but she was gonna call around and find us one that would 
So she called around, she gave us the name of one, then she, before she called, and then she ended up calling them, and luckily we hadn't left yet, because she was like, no, 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 don't leave, they actually don't take foreigners. So then she called multiple other hotels, and she told, let us wait in the AC in her hotel, while she tried to find us another one. Couldn't find us one, so then we walked around the corner to one of the police huts. Mm -hmm. That was pretty interesting. Yeah, inside the police huts, they're all networked together. And they all had their stupid video uh, conferencing going on. Mm -hmm. And so it was going from room to room to room, watching all these bored ass cops basically sticking their thumbs up their noses, doing nothing. Yeah. Um, all for the same town. Yeah. Like there's probably 20, 30, 40 different cops or presentations going on. Mm hmm pretty ridiculous. I thought it was also hilarious too that like they actually had the security camera like from the hotel on live display. Yeah. On on a 45 50 inch TV. In the, yeah, they had, had the it split shot. into like four separate video yeah. cameras and one was their little guard conference thing. One was the hotel and then the other two were traffic cameras. So, if this is going on in every police hut in that city, you are being watched everywhere. Yeah. Like, I was kind of blown away by that. I was like, whoa, this is creepy. Like, Big Brother is watching. That's crazy. It's not the only place that's like that in the world, but no. it's the but it's, first time I've actually gotten to see the cameras. Yeah, it's the first time we've see, ever see gotten to see the video stream. It. Yeah. So we went in that police hut because the owner of the hotel went to talk to the police and try and make them find us a hotel because they should know like where we can stay and if the people are telling us no they should know oh you actually can stay there and they should be able to tell them like you must accept us or here's what you have to do to accept foreigners but they were like no help at all pretty much uh, they were pretty stupid yeah they <laughs> were so indifferent to our situation they could have cared less this owner of the hotel was like so passionate about trying to help us find a place like you could tell she just thought this whole situation was ridiculous she was telling them like they're riding a bike like where are they supposed to go they can't just go like another 100k to another town like that's ridiculous there has to be somewhere for them to stay here and yeah they literally just sat there like meh well not meh. our problem that's their problem and she was making them call different hotels and ask, which that kind of blew my mind. I was like, you go, girl. Like, <laughs> that was pretty funny. Yeah. Pretty funny was, watching her talk, talk to the cops and I make, know. make them actually do something. Yeah, she was like, you will pick up the damn phone and call them. Like, oh, that was amazing. So after that didn't work, the story continues. We go in her car and she actually drives with us drives us to yeah, another to another hotel that can accept foreigners and then she sits there and talks with them about who knows what this is the original hotel that she called that said didn't take foreigners yeah it turned out they did yeah because when i looked over the counter they had a scanned passport of a german yeah so obviously they can't accept foreigners um but some for some reason she didn't ask what the price was and the lobby of this hotel was probably one of the fanciest hotel lobbies I've ever been in. I don't know about you. No. It was fancy. It was way yeah. more than we're ever going to pay for a hotel. Yeah, so day. right away we were like, uh, even if they do accept foreigners, I'm sure this is way out of our price range. But for some reason she didn't ask them what the price was, so I asked her and she called them as we were driving away to go get our luggage, which we left at her hotel. And she, they quote her 560 RMB, which is close to 100 US dollars. And even she on the phone was like, that is way too expensive. Like, <laughs> this is impossible. They can't afford that. And so, of course, like, I hear this. And then she hangs up and she tells me. And she's like, that's way too expensive, I think. And I'm like, uh, yeah. That is way far above what we are willing to pay for a hotel. Yeah. So that hotel was out. And then she even called more hotels 
and got back in her car. She dropped us back off at her hotel, got back in her car and drove to other hotels, also to no avail. So <laughs> she felt so bad and she was kind of like, what are you guys gonna do? And we're like, it's all right, we'll just ride out of town and camp. And then of course she's like, well, what if the weather gets bad? What are you gonna do? And we're like, we have a tent. It'll be okay. <laughs> Hence, camp. tent. <laughs> So we ended up riding 16k about 10 miles outside of town and we finally found this little dirt road and there's this abandoned building I guess. Yeah we're a, in an abandoned shelter. And yeah. It's nice. With the little like garage space with a roof and yeah there's nobody back here. I think it should be a good night. And we didn't register with the police. We didn't yeah. register with the police. Yeah, yeah, Nobody yeah. wanted us. Yeah. So, oh well. We ended up just eating dinner in town and then riding out and we found this spot. So, this might be the way the rest of our week in Scene John looks. We'll see. What you doing, honey? Opening my individually wrapped fucking jelly beans. <laughs> it's so and funny. And eating a minute's worth of work <laughs> in one bite. Oh no, you dropped one! Oh boy. <laughs> Was it worth the work?